everyone. As you are slowly joining in, this is Susie Schock here, and welcome to our vinyasa class. Welcome to Pure Yoga. We'll just pause and wait a minute while everyone is joining in. If you want to roll out your mat and get a nice, comfortable cross-legged seat, that would be great. We'll start with just a little bit of breath work. So, finding yourself in a comfortable cross-legged seat. Sitting bones grounded down evenly. Ah, I'm just going to start taking some deep breaths again while we're waiting for everyone to slowly settle in. I really, really appreciate that you are coming inside on this glorious day. I hope you were able to get some time outside, get some fresh air. Um, so, I think we're ready to start. All right, like I said, comfortable cross-legged seat. Eyes gently close. Drawing your gaze down to the mat and eyelids will follow. Palms facing down on your knees. Just settle for a moment and take that little internal inventory. If you're just signing in, again, my name is Susie Schock. I am the founder of Pure Yoga, and I will be guiding you through this practice this afternoon. And it's going to be kind of a free flow vinyasa class. Um, and I'll explain more when we come out of our breath work. So getting silent on your mat and just taking a moment to listen to what your body is asking of you today or communicating to you. I believe that divine wisdom comes through the communication from your body. So when you are feeling lost or ungrounded, sit in some silence and just ask your body for some feedback and it will tell you everything you need to know. So let's begin just by lengthening our breath out, filling the lungs, pausing and holding that beautiful life force in the body, and just gently passively exhaling the breath out. What breath looks like to me is divine light as it moves in. So visualize whether you think it's oxygen, whether you feel it's divine light, whatever it is, visualize it coming into the body and kind of creating a grid pattern. And that grid pattern holds in all the wellness you can imagine. Infinite abundance of wellness, just simply by deep breathing. You're resetting every part of your body with every single deep, beautiful, full breath. Visualize now as if this life force is coming in from the crown of the head and it's easing down in a spiral through the spine and it's slowly rooting down into the earth like you're literally growing roots down and out into the earth and it's starting again from the crown and it's easing down, spiraling down through the body, giving it everything it needs and then rooting into the earth, getting you grounded. One more time, deep, deep breath in, pulling it through, pulling it down, and just a passive exhale out. And I'd love for you to set an intention right now in this moment, um, and that attention is more, intention is more of an I am statement, and repeating that over and over throughout your practice. Maybe every time you come up to take a vinyasa as you move through that, you're honoring whatever that intention is. And the words that keep coming to me over and over every time I record a class is to tell everyone you are safe. You are safe, you are safe, you are safe, and you're continuing to communicate that to your body and allow your body to kind of let down a little bit from all of the stress 
I am safe, I am well, I am love, I am joy. I am present in this moment, in my body, in my full power, in my life force. Let's take three more grounding breaths. Two more. Remember to fill the lungs, allow them to expand, hold that life force, and then gently ease and release it out. Take another sip of air in from the crown of the head. And then let's gently just take circles with the torso. Palms are facing now, down, big deep circles with the torso. Eyes can remain closed. And just notice as you're adding some movement now how things are feeling, what things are being communicated to you. Think of the exhale as compressing the diaphragm, squeezing the air out. Make that breath a little more emphatic. Fire it up, that ujjayi pranayama, in through the nose, out through the nose. That audible breath, that beautiful filter. One more time in this direction. And then switch directions, rotate the other way. Again, feedback, notice how it's feeling as you're moving in this direction. Are there any triggers, any areas of congestion? Stacking the spine, filling the lungs, belly over thighs, exhale. Think of it as a lung cleansing. Fill the lungs, empty the lungs two more times. One more. Pause in stillness. Inhaling with spine center to the mat, and on the exhale, bring left hand over to the right knee. Take a little gentle twist. Belly coming through shoulders, finishing with the gaze. It could be an internal gaze with eyes closed. Good. Inhale back to the center. Allow yourself to twist in the opposite direction. Right hand, left knee. Belly comes through shoulders and gaze. And again, maybe it's that internal gaze. Good, inhale back to the center, palms are planted on the knees, inhale opening up the chest, and then exhale carve out the belly to spine, chin to chest. Inhale stack the spine, fill the lungs, open the heart, open the throat. Exhale, bring it through, cat spine. Two more, inhale. And exhale. Lengthen it out a little bit more. Fill the lungs open, open, open. Exhale, empty the lungs. This alone is just this gorgeous reset for your body. Stacking the spine, breathing in, breathing out. Slowly come onto tabletop. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Finding cat and cow from hands and knees. Allow the tailbone to tip to the sky. Belly comes through, shoulders and gaze. Find your cow pose on the inhale. Exhale, tip the tailbone to the mat. Let everything else come through. Broaden the back, chin to chest. Reverse, inhale, inhale, inhale. Stretching the movements out so nice and long, luxurious breath. Good, a couple more. And while you're moving through your cat and cows, my hair needs to be pulled back. Let's do three more. Again, lengthening the breath, ujjayi pranayama. Little constriction in the back of the throat. Separate the teeth, let the jaw relax. In through the nose, out through the nose. That alone is just so calming, relaxing. 
and meditative. Moving back into a tabletop pose. Good, inhale, left arm high to the sky. <clears throat> Exhale, sweep it through, but we're not gonna go all the way down. Inhale, reach it high to the sky again. Fire up the breath a little bit more. Exhale through, inhale high. Exhale through, one more time, inhale high. Exhale through, bring it high, pause and hold. Circle the arm around, just warming up through the shoulders. Long, even breath. Good, now switch and rotate in the other direction. Long, even breath. Beautiful. Reground to the mat, right hand reaches high, inhale. Exhale, get the air out. Inhale. Exhale. Again. Exhale. One more time. Exhale. Slow it down, reach it high. Start to circle the arm around, big, deep circles. Feeling the prana, the life force moving through the body as you begin to make the movements even deeper, switch directions. One more time, reach it high. Lower it back down to the mat. Wag your tail a, li a little bit, bringing shoulder to hip, side to side. You can certainly bring in that cat spine as you're drawing hip over to shoulder. Again, fire up the breath. Inhale. Exhale. Three more times. One more. Tabletop pose, zipping up the lower abdominals, Uddiyana Bandha. Pull up of the pelvic floor as well. Good, now extending right arm and left leg. Stabilize through the glutes. So you're hugging muscle to bone, stabilizing through the pelvis, like you've got a corset going all the way around the core. Full breath in, and exhale, bring elbow to knee. Inhale, reaching nice and long. Exhale, slowly elbow to knee. Inhale, extend, reach it nice and long. Exhale, elbow to knee. Hold here, squeeze the air out. Now lengthen, replenish the air. Stay as you are. You can always drop the toes down to the mat or reach back for your foot. Kicking foot into hand. Finding a little front body opening. Good, release it out. Lower it down. Cat and cow, however you want to take it. I'm going to do little rotations of my spine because that's what I need today. And that's what I would like for you to do this entire practice. I'll call out postures, but you find your way through them. Find what feels good to you. Belly's drawn in, pelvic floor is pulled up, glutes are firm, reach it long. Find the stability before you move. Find your center, inhale. Exhale, squeeze the air out, elbow to knee. Inhale, get some length. Exhale, squeeze the air out, elbow to knee. Inhale, replenish. Exhale, elbow to knee, pause and hold. Squeeze everything out of your lungs. Now fill the lungs, replenish. Staying as you are, again, you could drop the toes down to the mat or you can reach back for your foot, foot into hand. Kicking in nicely. Front body opening, nice opening to the chest, the shoulder. Hold here, three, two, reach it out on one. Lower it down again, neutralize the spine. I'm gonna do little rolls. You can do up and down, cat and cow. Just a reset. Nice, finding yourself back in your tabletop pose. First of all, let's just roll out the wrists a little bit if they're getting a little fatigued. Both directions. Maybe adding the shoulders in there as well. Good. Reground the hands. Hands are right underneath the shoulders. Step back into your high plank pose. Good. Pedaling it out just a little bit. And as you're pedaling, you're slowly going to lift the hips high. 
into downward facing dog. We're not going to stay there though. We're just going to pedal right back into our high plank. Nice. And then bring it high again. Now let's fire up our breath a little bit. Pause and hold in your downward facing dog. Get a good exhale. Good. Inhale like you're finding a cat spine. Cat spine's going into plank pose. Reverse that cat spine. You're moving back into downward facing dog. Finding cat spine into plank pose. And then exhale into downward facing dog. Good. Inhale into plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. One more time. Inhale into plank. Exhale, lower all the way down to the mat. Tops of the feet press down, setting up for cobra pose. Nose taps down to the mat. On your next inhale, lifting head, neck, and shoulders. Baby cobra. Exhale, lower back down. Inhale, lifting up. Baby cobra. Stack the spine. Lowering down. Lifting up, baby cobra. One more time, lower down. Lifting up, baby cobra, pause and hold. Four, three, two, lower down on one. Pull the hips back. Get a good stretch, child's pose. Pause and hold here, maybe rocking the hips a little bit from side to side. Maybe bring the knees a little bit wider, finding extended child's pose. Moving on to tented fingers. So you've got a little more range of motion. Think of just fluidity. Your breath is moving into the body and it's circulating around. And your breath isn't stiff and rigid, so your body shouldn't be stiff and rigid. Make sure there's a little bend in the elbows, a little flow through the hips. Let's reach back up into tabletop pose, curling the toes under, downward facing dog. This time we'll pause and hold here for a little bit. Pedaling it out again, shifting weight and gaze, whatever you do on your first downward facing dog to make it feel really luscious and powerful at the same time. Nice. Let's slowly inhale, right leg high. Just pause and hold <clears throat> with the leg lifted, reaching out through the heel and then pointing the toes, and then reaching out through the heel, rolling through the arch of the feet, or foot, pointing the toes, flex the foot, and then reach out just through the ball of the foot. Now pause and hold here, inhale, and then exhale, open the hips, and take a minute there, and just circle it around, and around, maybe the ankle, maybe the knee, Good, and then square it off. Easing into runner's lunge, foot walks to the outside edge of the mat. Now, if your fists are feeling fatigued, come up onto, excuse me, if your wrists are feeling fatigued, come up onto your wrists. So palms are facing each other. So you've got neutral wrists. Good, and I'm just gonna lift and lower a little bit. So on the inhale, let's lift. On the exhale, ease down into that runner's lunge. On the inhale, lift. On the exhale, ease down. And now I'm bringing little circles into it. You do, again, whatever feels good to you. This feels really great to me, so I'm just going to lift and lower. This is my practice. You have your practice. That's the beauty of it. Body wisdom, listening to what your body is communicating. One more time, inhale, lift. And then exhale, lower down, deep breath in. Exhale, straighten the leg. And inhale, come forward. Exhale, straighten the leg. Inhale, come forward, toes are flexed back. Straighten the leg. Come forward, pause and hold. Left hand will stay grounded, inhale. And exhale, take a little twist. Hand can come to the outside of the knee, it can reach to the sky, it can grab onto the back foot. Find what works best for you. Pause in this very beautiful lengthening posture. And then allow yourself to come back to center. Grounding the hands, toes curl under, front foot meets the back. You're in plank, inhale. 
On the exhale, shift forward, lower as slowly as you can, whether it's from toes or from knees into your first chaturanga. You can come all the way down to the mat or stop at 90 degrees. Up dog or cobra. Pause and hold your up dog or your cobra. Belly's drawn in, nice and firm, protecting the low back. And then lifting back into downward facing dog. Breathing in, breathing out. Good, now I like to find a little cat spine coming forward and then pulling back again. So it's like a little pelvic tilt that releases my low lumbar. So you're going almost in a little circle where you're bending the knees, pulling the hips back. Find that little bit of a tip of the pelvis, cat spine coming back into plank. Pulling back, tip of the pelvis. One more time. And then settle into downward facing dog. Left leg lifts high. Pause and hold here. Flex the foot. Roll through the arch of the foot, point the toes. Curve it back, flex the foot, reach out through the heel. Roll through the arch of the foot, point the toe. One more time, flex the foot. Reach out until you're reaching through the ball of the foot, lift it a little bit higher and then open the hip. Circling it around. If your wrists now are feeling fatigued, make sure that you're putting the weight into the finger pads and out of the heel of the hand. Let's square the hips off and slowly coming into runner's lunge. Coming up onto fists. Inhale, lift and exhale, lower. Good, you know the drill. We're just gonna lift and lower and when I'm lifting and lowering, I'm gonna take little circles again. And just allowing my legs, my hips, my low back to communicate how are they feeling. And actually today they're feeling really good. Sometimes they're fairly tight. I notice that when I'm at my computer longer during the day that they don't want to do what I want to do. So we compromise. All right, beautiful. One more time, lifting and lowering. And then coming down to the back knee. Actually, yes, coming down to the back knee. Let's take an inhale and then an exhale. Lift up, little rotation. Could be on the, back, or the side of the knee, up to the sky, or to the back foot. Whatever feels good. Nice. Couple more breaths. Good, reground. Front foot meet. Oh no, we're gonna lift or go front and back again. That's what I was forgetting. Okay, take an inhale. Exhale, pull the hips back, toes curl back. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Good, inhale forward. Exhale back. One more time. Forward and back. Bring it forward, ground the hands. Front foot meets the back. Take an inhale, shift the weight forward. Take a very slow chaturanga, whether it's 90 degrees or all the way down to the mat, up dog or cobra. And downward facing dog, breathe in. Breathe out. You can stay just as you are in stillness, or you can do the little roll of the pelvis into plank pose and then pull back with bent knees. Good, a couple more times. Good, stay back, pressing heels down towards the mat. They never have to meet the mat. Just a nice lengthening, a little bend in the knee. All right, friends, let's take it to the top of the mat. You can do wide, you can do hip distance, whatever you need today. Take a halfway lift, and then exhale, surrender and fold. Let's do that a couple more times. Inhale, stack the spine. Exhale, surrender and fold. Two more, inhale. Exhale, one more. Exhale, fold, ragdoll. What do you wanna do, ragdoll? You can let the hands hang heavy. Rock side to side, interlace them in front of you, interlace them behind you. I can't even see you, so I don't know what you're doing, but enjoy it. You could be having a piece of cake right now for all I know. Enjoy that. 
couple more breaths rocking side to side. I'm just going to move into my chest expansion. Everything feels right with the world when you're practicing yoga. See if you can shift from this mindset off the mat throughout the rest of your evening. Let the hands hang heavy. Good. If you're wider than hip distance, bring it in hip distance. Take a halfway lift and another forward fold. Ground the feet. Stack the spine. Come all the way up into mountain pose. Tadasana. And then hands come to heart center. I'm going to give you some cues for Tadasana that I give in all of my classes. And then I will stop giving them through the rest of the class. Just know that this applies to all the standing poses. So think of Tadasana grounding. Getting as much foundation with the feet as you can. Draw that foundation up through the legs. Glutes are firming, so everything's pulling into the midline. The mula bandha, or the root lock, lifts up. The core tightens, lower abdominals, right? So you've got that internal hug all the way around the corset, and then we lift it up, back, open, and down, right? So apply that anytime you're feeling wobbly or stressed or strained in your practice. Let's move through Sri Namaskar A. Inhale, arms up and overhead. Exhale, open swan dive, forward fold. Inhale, open, halfway lift. Exhale, ground the hands, step back, slowly lower, empty the lungs. Inhale, fill the lungs, upward facing dog or cobra. And then exhale, empty the lungs again, downward facing dog. Breathe in. And breathe out. Good, rolling up onto all ten toes, bend the knees, belly to thighs, stretch the arches of the feet. Inhale, prepare to move. And exhale, let's take it to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, get some length. Exhale, just surrender into the fold. Good, inhale, sweep it high, Tadasana. This time, let's get a baby back bend, open up the heart. Inhale, palms to touch. Exhale, hands to the heart, forward fold. Maybe try bent knees. Open to a long spine, halfway lift. Ground the hands, step back, flow. Up dog or cobra. Downward facing dog. I invite you, if Chaturanga isn't in your practice, just move into Downward Facing Dog. All is beautiful. We're listening to our body's wisdom. Breathe in. On the exhale, top of the mat, walk or jump. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, Tadasana, Mountain Pose, Steeple Grip. Exhale, side body bend. Good, inhale, center. Exhale, side body bend. A couple more times. Inhale, center. Release the hand, side body bend. Inhale, center. Side body bend. Two more. Again. One more time. Back to the center again. Interlace hands behind you or grab opposite elbow. Shoulder shrug opens up the heart space. Bending at the knees, lead with the chest as you fold. Belly comes to the thighs. Slowly open into that chest expansion. Feels really good with the knees bent to just let the spine have its opportunity to shine, to create some more space. Deep, deep breathing without any strain in the hamstrings. Let the hands hang heavy, really yummy. Inhale, halfway lift. Ground your hands again, stepping back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Lifting up and open, shine the heart. Reaching back, surrender, downward facing dog. All is well, right? All is so well. Rolling up onto ten toes, bend the knees, belly to thighs. Bring it back to the top of the mat, walk or jump. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Sit back in your chair. Can you brush fingertips to the mat, sitting up fingertips high or hands to heart center. And then exhale, brush the mat. Inhale. Exhale. 
Remember the principles that I taught you in Tadasana. You're going to use them now. Firm the glutes. Pull everything in. Open up. Exhale out. Three more. One more. Slow it down. And hands through the heart forward. Fold. Open. Halfway lift. Ground the hands. Stepping back. Chaturanga. Up dog. Beautiful downward facing dog. Inhaling right leg high. Bend the knee, open the hip. Inhale, square it off. Exhale, knee comes to the nose. Inhale, bring it nice and high again. Exhale, leads you low lunge. Stabilize the hips, sweep it up to crescent lunge. Open, warrior two. Good, inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, take it right down to the mat. Chaturanga. Up dog or cobra. Downward facing dog. Do you feel more alive? Good. Inhale, left leg. Bend the knee, open the hip. Squaring it off. Knee comes to the nose. Bring it high again. Finding your low lunge. Stabilize. Squeeze in, pull up, crescent lunge. Warrior two. Good, reverse your warrior, side body bend, fill the lungs. Bring it down to the mat, front foot meets the back, empty them out. <sighs> Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Whoo, deep breath in. Exhale, top of the mat. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair pose, Utkatasana. This time, exhale, gentle twist. Right arm back, left arm forward. Use that core, belly's pulling you through, shoulders and gaze. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale, gentle twist. Belly's coming through, shoulders and then the gaze. All is well. Inhale, center. Exhale, hands through the heart. Forward fold. Open, halfway lift. Ground the hands, stepping back, chaturanga. Up dog or cobra. Downward facing dog. Good, inhale right leg high. Bend the knee, open the hip. Stay as you are this time or flip your dog. Wee Huge, beautiful front body opening. Ah. Let's square it off. Right leg lifts high. And knee comes to the nose. And right leg comes high. And you're finding low lunge. And then we'll find crescent lunge. Let's add on. Inhale, come to rise. Exhale, back into lunge. Inhale, rise. Exhale, lunge. Two more. Good. One more. Gentle twist. Right arm back, left arm forward. Pause and just breathe into it. If you want it deeper, Back hand comes to the back thigh. Ah. Inhale, center. Straighten the leg. Exhale, warrior two. Good. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, extended side angle. Let's flow. Inhale, reverse. Extended side angle. Two more. Get the air out. Reverse. Pause and hold. Extended side angle. Breathing in. Breathing out. How do you want to experience this? For me, I'm just gonna circle the arm around and get some more side body bending, side body stretching. You can stay just as you are. You could half bind, you could whole bind. Good, one more time around, and I'm gonna reach it high to the sky. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Now reach the top hand to the front of the mat, little deeper extension and then slowly ease into your prasarita. Feet come parallel, open halfway lift, rooting down through the outside edge of the feet, staying as you are, maybe fold a little bit more. Maybe shifting hip side to side, getting a little inner thigh stretch here. What does your body need? Nice. Wherever you're at, coming back to the center. 
We'll move into warrior two to the back of the mat. So you're gonna face the toes towards the back of the mat and then slowly wind yourself back around into reverse warrior and then extended side angle. And then reverse warrior and then extended side angle. Two more. Beautiful. One more. Extended side angle, pause and hold. Top hand can stay as it is. You can half bind if you'd like. Whatever you did on the other side, I'm just gonna do these really deep circles because that to me in this moment feels more expansive than anything. Beautiful, a couple more. Whether it's circles or breaths. Good, that top hand's gonna reach high. And now it's gonna reach to the back of the mat. And we're slowly gonna carve out Bringing feet parallel, even pigeon toe, take a halfway lift and fold into prasarita. <laughs> opposite hand to opposite foot. So taking a little twist. Coming back to center, switch sides, opposite hand, opposite foot. Notice how I didn't call out a side because it doesn't really matter when you're practicing on your own. Coming back to center. Coming to a halfway lift and a fold. All the way up, we're doing this in reverse. Now our heels are gonna come in and toes tick out, sinking down into goddess pose. Externally rotate those thighs, knees track out towards the pinky toes, lift it up, shoulders come back, hands come to heart center. So I'll distract you with a story. I have these gorgeous genie pants on right now that one of my instructors, Maddie, gave to me. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. But as a little kid, all I ever wanted to be was I Dream of Genie. And I used to sit in my bedroom and I put my hands like this and I blink and try to move things and make things appear. So, this is my day to come out as I dream of Jeannie. One more breath, inhale, exhale, star pose, beautiful. Open warrior two to the front of the room, front of the mat, inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, bring it down to the mat. Front foot meets the back, chaturanga. I'll elaborate on other things that I did with my genie pajamas. <laughs> Step it back. Good, downward facing dog. Breathing in, breathing out, reset. Good, inhale, left leg high. Bending the knee, open the hip. Staying as you are, flip your dog. Good. Enjoy this beautiful opening wherever you're at. Hold and breathe, inhale. Exhale, reground hands, lifting left leg high. Knee comes to the nose. Good, bring it high. Coming into low lunge. Stabilize up to crescent lunge. And I'm gonna switch sides so I'm still facing you. Nice, inhale, let's rise. And exhale, lower down. Inhale, rise. Exhale, lower down. Two more, lift it up. Ease in, use your breath, inhale. Gentle twist on the exhale. Inhale back to the center. Exhale, open, warrior two. Good, inhale, reverse your triangle this time. Exhale, trikonasana. Inhale, reverse your triangle. Exhale, trikonasana, two more. One more. Pause and hold. How do you want to take triangle pose? Maybe it's a half bind. Maybe it's a whole bind. Maybe the arm is extending for a little more strengthening. Whatever it is, just enjoy it. Enjoy it and be kind. Good, two more breaths. One more. Perfect, releasing hands, floor to sky. Good, get a bend in the knee. Just like we did before, we're gonna extend it long, carve it out, finding a halfway lift, but this time around, actually feet will stay pointing to the outside edges of the mat. We're gonna side lunge and side lunge. Good, and side lunge. 
Just nice deep stretches. If you want a little more strengthening, you'll take fingertips off the mat and maybe like skaters, just go side to side. Maybe you're here. What does your body need right now? Maybe you're bringing shoulder down to opposite knee or hand to opposite knee. Whatever it is, just explore it and love wherever you're at. Let's move four and three. Beautiful two and one. We're going to pause to the right knee. We're going to lift and then lower and ease into side lunge. Good. It could be here or you could take Janushasana legs, 90 degree bend to the inner thigh. Foot is flex, knee to the sky, toes to the sky. Breathing in and breathing out. If you are in full side lunge and you want to take a bind, that is an option as well. Love wherever you're at. Love the one you're with. Because you only get to see that one person, or maybe it's a couple people in your family, for the rest of the month. Oh, deep breath. Beautiful. Release. Coming into low lunge to the front of the mat. Reaching up nice and tall. Find a little baby back bend. Hands reach down to the mat, inhale, exhale, pull the hips back, straighten the front leg. Toes curl back towards the nose. Shifting forward, finding pyramid pose, straightening both legs. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold. Gently unraveling, inhale, halfway lift. Left hand will stay grounded. Maybe the back foot walks out a little bit more. Revolve triangle. One more breath. Coming back to the center, bend in the knee. Good, stepping back, opening to warrior two. Inhale, reverse your triangle. Exhale, Trikonasana. Inhale, reverse your triangle. Exhale, Trikonasana. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. And exhale, triangle pose. Again, explore it how you did on the other side. I took a half bind. Let my shoulder open, my heart space open. Bottom hand reaching to the front of the mat. Make sure not to lock out this front knee, right? Let the thigh, or the muscles of the thigh hug the bone. More stability. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more breath. Beautiful, reaching floor to sky. Getting a bend in the front knee, you are an extended side angle. Slowly, slowly move into that fold. Heels continue to stay ticking out. Side lunging, front and back. Find your own rhythm. Find your own way of exploring it. Just make it fun. Make it fluid. Feel anything and everything that you've been holding on to over the last couple of weeks melt off of you with your breath and your movement. Nice. One more time, and then ending in side lunge to the left. Lifting up and then lowering down. Straighten leg externally rotates. Toes go to the sky, knee goes to the sky. Remember, if that's too deep for you, Janushasana. Put a pillow under here if you need it. Good. Inhale. If you want to take it a little bit deeper, if you're in Janushasana, you can just do a little side bending here or arm extending up. If you are in full, Side lunge, hand comes around, hand goes around if you want to take the bind. One more breath. Oh, I just got a little chiropractic adjustment on myself. <laughs> Releasing the binds if you have it. Finding low lunge to the back of the room. Inhale, reaching up. And then 
pulling back. Little baby back bend. All is well. Heart is open. And release, finding pyramid pose, straightening both legs. Inhale, walk the back foot in nicely. Find some length and then exhale, fold. My daughter Izzy had a really interesting observation. She said she could tell when teachers were enjoying the class, you could tell in their voice because they were smiling and you could tell they were smiling through their voice. And I thought that was a really interesting observation for her. Your voice changes when you smile and your entire energy system changes when you smile. All right, inhale, halfway lift. Walk the back foot out a little bit. Right hand will stay planted. Take a breath in, lengthen the spine. Exhale, bring the belly through the shoulders and the gaze. Revolve triangle. Make tweaks and adjustments as needed so you feel stable and it feels good. Couple more breaths. Nice, coming back to center. Walking the foot out, finding extended side angle, inhale, and then exhale, melt it back down to the mat, sweep it through, heels tick in, toes tick out, sitting down in a nice yogi squat, so you may need to even inch the feet back together a little bit more, yogi squat. All right, to continue my genie outfit, so, I wanted to be I Dream of Jeannie, and we actually found I Dream of Jeannie pajamas that my parents ordered for me. They were pink, and I would wear them, and there was a dress-up day at school, and I wore them to school, and I went so far as to create a styrofoam cup and pulled my ponytail through it, so I looked just like I Dream of Jeannie, and I got called out that I was wearing pajamas to school and that I needed to change. <laughs> so. All the more excited I am that I get to wear these today on live Facebook. Woohoo! All right, let's do a little breathing now. Right, you've been in that squat for a while. Let's inhale, come to rise. Exhale, lower down. Good, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, one more time. Inhale. Exhale, pause and hold. Okay, you can stay as you are. Let's just do a quick little crow pose. Pointer fingers facing the front of the room, the rest of the fingers spread out evenly from there. Knees squeeze in, lifting up. Here we are, holding here three. Beautiful two. Back into your squat on one. Take an inhale, exhale. Toe heel the feet, hip distance. Lengthen the spine and then finding Padagustasana, yogi toe pose. So grabbing onto the big toes with the peace fingers. Bend the knees as much as you need to. Release the toes, find a halfway, and a fold. Move all the way into Tadasana, mountain pose. If you can't see me, just turn yourself on your mat so you can see what we're doing. All right, rooting down, let's do just a little bit of balancing. Good, sitting back in your chair. Arms open into cactus. Left arm comes under right, could be here, could be here and left knee comes over right. Kickstand the toes if you'd like, or double bind, whatever feels good in your body. One more breath. And slowly release, but knee is gonna come up. Left hand's gonna come to the big toe mount. Thumb to big toe, knees draw together, setting up for dancers. Inhale here. Exhale, kicking into, woo, maybe yes, maybe no. Kicking into your hand. Good. 
Breathe in. Breathe out. Staying here for one more breath. Challenge pose is to bring the foot through. Maybe grabbing onto the knee. Take an inhale. Exhale, straighten the leg to your ability. One more breath. Could be here, remember. Could be here. Inhale. Exhale. Figure four. Weight goes back in the heel again. Maybe you want to play a little bit. You want to take a little arm balance, just like we did in curl pose, except you're hooking foot and knee. Get a little deeper stretch. Some of you may want to extend that leg. Find your figure four. Two more breaths wherever you're at. One more breath. Let it go. Release it up. Hands through the heart. Fingertips down. Get a sip of water if you need one. I need one. I'm getting a little warm. Mm -hmm. Remember, open mouth exhales if you need to get rid of heat. Let's reset. Just like in the very beginning of class, ground the feet, spread the toes out evenly. Sit back in your chair. Arms open up. Right arm under left. Little shoulder shrug. Could be here. Elbows up. Forearms away. Shoulders back. Right knee over left. Eagle pose. Right in the heels. Remember to ground down and then zip up. Stack the spine. Find the ease in the pose. Hug, muscle to bone, muscle to bone, and then lift. Let the energy lift up and out of the crown of the head. One more breath. And release. Knee bends, give it a hug. All right, dancer's pose, thumb to big toe. Draw the knees together, left arm extends high. Inhale, and then exhale, kicking foot into hand. Some days it's good, some days it's not. No judgment. Nice. One more breath. Beautiful. Challenge pose again is to bring the foot through or grab onto the knee or grab onto the big toe. Inhale and exhale, extend, reaching out through the heel. Hold here, three. Beautiful two, figure four on one, crossing at the ankle. If you took the arm balance, want to be balanced on the hip as well. There we go. Do whatever feels good. Another breath, just like that. Hmm. Release feet down to the mat. Inhale all the way up. And hands come down to your side. Step it up. We made it through the standing sequence. Let's find our way down to the mat. Inhale, arms up and overhead. Exhale, swan dive and fold. Open, halfway lift. Ground the hands. Step back, chaturanga. Up dog. Beautiful downward facing dog. Breathing in, breathing out. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, lower all the way down. We already did cobra pose. So let's bring arms behind us. Good, legs are apart hip distance. Pull the belly and the pelvic floor in, firm the glutes. Inhale, lift, locust pose, salabhasana. All is well. Breathing into it. Nice deep lift. Lower down, right cheek to the mat. Let everything be soft. Your work here is done. Everything is soft. <sighs> One more breath of relaxation. Maybe shift the hips side to side a little bit. You can stay as you are and relax. You can take a second set of locust 
Or if you wanted to go into bow pose, I like to hook my heels, actually, so I've got a little handle. Or you can just grab outside of the feet. On the in-breath, prepare, and then lift. Lift, lift, lift. Kicking feet into hands, knees staying hip distance apart. One more breath. As big as you can get, wherever you're at. And then lower down, opposite cheek to the mat. Everything softens. Maybe shift the hips side to side. Hmm. Good, chin comes center. Pull back, child's pose. Let's do traditional child's pose, so knees are together. So if you want to take rabbit pose, you certainly can. Right now I start with my forehead of the mat. I'm grabbing my heels. And then I slowly lift to the top of my head. So I'm actually looking between my knees, lifting my hips. Shoulder blades separate. It's a great stretch on the cervical and thoracic spine all the way down to the lumbar. Good, lower down, heels to, um, sitting bones to heels, and then come to stand on the knees. Anchoring hands on the low lumbar spine, setting up for Ustrasana. I like to curl my toes under, feels more stable on my knees, but you could be on the tops of your feet as well. So zip everything up, hugging internally, inhale, lift up, and then open. Gazing at the sky, maybe continue to reach down for the heels. Gazing to the back wall. If you've reached your heels, continue to press the hips forward so that they are lining up over the knees. Good. Gently come up and release. A little trick with that posture, too. Find child's pose. If you're in the studio and you want to grab back and you can't reach your heels, you can always grab two blocks. Um, at home, if you want to do that posture, you want to go deeper, grab a couple uh, tomato sauce cans or, or jars. They're even a little bit higher. All right. Let's get a full breath and then an open mouth exhale, just releasing, letting go. Sweeping arms up and overhead. Curling toes under. Downward facing dog. Inhale, rolling up onto all ten toes. Bend the knees, belly to thighs. Shooting yourself through. I'm trying not to hit my water bottle, and I did it. I'm just going to hold boat pose for one deep breath, and then down to half boat, and then all the way down to the mat surrender. I'm going to inch myself back, setting up for bridge pose. But let's first get a full body stretch. Reaching fingertips all the way down to toes. Inhale. Exhale, bring the arms down to the sides. Bend the knees. Heels to sitting bones. Hip distance apart. Begin by just tipping the tailbone away from the mat so you're lengthening the lumbar and you're also lengthening the quadriceps, hip flexors. And slowly lift the hips off. Shimmying the shoulders underneath. If you want a more restorative one and you happen to have a blanket or a pillow by you, just placing it underneath the lumbar spine. Maybe interlacing hands if you want to take it deeper. Drawing chest to chin. Good. Slowly lowering down. Supta Baddha Konasana, or maybe you are windshield wipering the knees from side to side. Just allow that beautiful release. Everything is soft, breath is soft, telling your body, I am safe, I am well, I am healthy, I am joyful. <sighs> Staying as you are because you're really loving what you're doing. If you want to take a second set of bridge or full wheel, feel free. For full wheel, you're making those Mickey Mouse ears and you're flipping them back so that fingertips are now reaching towards or pointing towards the shoulders. On an inhale, gently lift. Once you find it, shimmying shoulders over wrists. So that may mean straightening the legs a little bit. Good, and making your way back down in your own 
timing. This time, feel free if you want to bring knees into the chest, give them little circles. All is well. Little circles in the other direction. Perfect. All right, let's rock and roll three times along the length of your spine. Moving into hip openers. Yay, you know when hip openers are coming around. It's all ease from here. Rocking and rolling, you can go all the way through into downward facing dog if you want to take half pigeon. Um, if you would rather do a seated pose. So I did half pigeon yesterday. I did cow face the day before. So today I'm going to do fire lock. Um, you can always lay on your back and take figure four as well. So easy seat's a nice way to start. And if you're not feeling much sensation, fire log, you start crossing shin over shin. Now I don't have the most open hips. So this is usually where I start. And if your ankle's bugging your knee, put a little um, hand towel in between there or a blanket in between there. And I like to flex the feet so the knees are protected. This is usually how I begin. And then I kind of play around with it and breathe and see how much my hips are going to release. Sometimes a lot, sometimes not so much, but today I'm fairly warm. So that's the other thing you want to watch for in your hip opener is your body's pretty darn warm by this time of the practice. You've just finished the standing sequence. Very mindful not to overstretch. I never go to my edge any longer in my hip opening postures. 50 to 75% at most. And I say this often in my class as well. You can judge if you've overstretched by how you feel about three hours later after class when everything slowly, when the muscles get cold again. Do they tighten back up or do they stay nice and long for you? Let's take about four more breaths wherever you're at. If you're in a seated pose, you can take some side body bending. If you are in half pigeon, feel free to take king pigeon. And if you're on your back, just extend legs to the sky and enjoy just being on your back. Very little stress or strain. And then everyone in your own time, release. Those of you in seated, extending legs long, pedal them out. Maybe take a forward fold. And those of you in half pigeon, downward facing dog. And those of you in, in, on your back, your legs are already extended to the sky. Good. Breath in. And then reset yourself. So if you're easy seat, left is in front of right this time. No, it isn't. <laughs> That's not the way I did it. Honestly, I don't remember how I did it. I gotta think about this now. There, left is in front of right, left is over right. I got such a deep stretch on my left side with the other leg on top. <sighs> Always let your breath be your guide.
And once again, let's take about four more breaths here. If you're in seated and you want to do something a little bit different, feel free to take some side body bends. King Pigeon. Hmm, wishing I had a block right now. I'm halfway, not quite all the way down with that elbow. Good. And everybody gently release. Let's all find one final downward facing dog together. Pedaling it out again. And then finding some stillness. Slowly making your way down onto your knees, crossing your legs and pulling your feet through. Legs extend long out in front of you. Toes curl back towards the nose. Get a bend in the knees if we're working on flexibility. Make sure sitting bones are evenly planted. Inhale like you're lifting up and then you're pouring your bowl, your pelvis over. So belly connects to the thighs. And you can stay here. You could melt the forehead down. As long as belly's connected, you can continue to explore flexibility. You can continue to unravel and unravel, inching the belly a little bit further forward. Good. And you can stay as you are. If you want to change the stretch up a little bit, Try pointing the toes on one foot, flexing the other one back, and then switching. Just pointing and flexing. Just like we did in one of our first downward facing dogs. When we lifted the leg. Nice. Now point them both, and then curl them back and flex them both. Inhale, up. And then slowly carve out the belly, make your way down to the mat. Your knees will come into your chest. Rolling around a little bit, circles with the knees. Again, if you happen to have a pillow, you can put it right underneath the low lumbar and feet to the sky, just a nice restorative. Feet in the air, reversing or helping the blood flow to reverse. If you want to go deeper, moving into plow pose and shoulder stand. I like to stand, or start out in plow pose and let my cervical and thoracic spine lengthen a little bit, get my shoulders in place, and then lift up. But do whatever feels right to you. Always making sure, though, that weight is on the shoulders and the triceps, not on the neck. If you're feeling any pressure on the neck, roll out of it and then put a nice blanket under the shoulders so that gives you a little extra lift and cervical spine can be off the mat. as you want. Knees can come to nose, knees can come to ears, you can extend back into plow pose too. And from here let's move into fish pose, so grounding the palms down, thumbs touching. Hips slowly roll right on top of the hands. And I'm going to slowly shimmy my elbows underneath, lowering the legs to the mat while my heart lifts towards the sky, my throat opens, my heart opens, and the top of my head just gently brushes the mat. But weight is on the forearms, legs are straight, 
And feel free, if you're in fish pose, if you want to just gently ease the chin from side to side, stretching up the sides of the neck and the throat. Maybe opening the mouth wide, sticking the tongue out. And then melting back down to the mat. Release hands out from underneath the hips. Finding happy baby or maybe half happy baby. So I'm going to keep one leg grounded and then just extend with one foot or out through the heel. Or it could be with a bent knee. Good. A couple more breaths wherever you're at. And then let's move into supine twist. Both knees or the right knee comes in. Take an inhale and then on the exhale, right knee or both knees come across the body to the left side. Right arm extends, gazing to the right hand. to the center, give it a nice good squeeze. Maybe circle it around, a little compression. Switch sides, left knee or both knees come in. Inhale, center, and then exhale, guide it across the body. Left knee goes to the right side, left hand extends out, gazing to the left fingertips. Bring it back to the center. Right knee meets the left, dropping forearms over shins. Forehead comes up to the knees. On the inhale, press shins into forearms. Get a really beautiful stretch. And then on the exhale, opening up. For your final Shavasana. Breathing in, open mouth, exhale.
Since you are at home, you can stay in your Shavasana as long as you would like. If you're ready to move on with your day, begin to fill the lungs again with gratitude and joy. Start wiggling toes, brushing thumbs over fingertips. I give you permission to leave everything that you brought with you today right here on the mat. And as you roll onto your side, think of just hitting a reset button and restarting your day, restarting your life in this moment. And you have the opportunity to redesign it exactly how you like. Take another breath in. And a breath out. And when you feel ready, coming up to a comfortable cross-legged seat. Eyes are closed. This time, palms are facing up on the knees, posture you're receiving. So I'll end the class by finishing my story. The reason why I was telling you about the genie pajamas and my pants that I'm wearing today is not because I just love these pants. When I was little, I believed in magic and that's why I wanted to be genie so badly. And to this day, I still believe in magic. Only I translate magic into miracles. And I have many, many examples of miracles that have happened in my life, and I believe you probably have as well. And that's what I think is so magical about this time right now, this pause that we are all feeling. And I guess we've been forced into it. Um, and to me, it's the Earth's way of saying, stop, just stop it, and pause and listen and look at the miracles all around you. And the only way to do that is if we're quiet. And miracles have been happening all over the Earth, the way people are treating each other, the way the ocean has been responding. I could go on and on and on. But I want you to reflect for a moment throughout the rest of your evening on some of the miracles that you're experiencing as well. Let's bring your hands in prayer position to heart center. And guide the love and light from the heart center to the third eye. May you have peace in your thoughts. Prayer hands to your lips, may you have peace in your words. Prayer hands back to your heart, peace in your heart and your action. Bowing forward to seal in our practice, yogis. Namaste. I love you and I miss you all. Well, how timely is that? <laughs> Have a beautiful, beautiful day. I am here if you need me. You can always email me. Oh, isn't that funny? I'm trying to tap my computer.